Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. You're going to be so glad that you showed up today. It's so great to see you. Um, this month is all about fun and play, and I hope that we um, are exemplary of that here up on stage. Um, I want you to know, and, and if you would join me in wishing Neil Sedaka a happy 83rd birthday. Ready? Happy, happy birthday! birthday. Woo! Like I'm sure he's watching. Um, Who's this tomorrow? Neil Sedaka wrote... Um, Breaking Up is Hard to Do, Laughter in the Rain. It's great. All about fun. I can just see him up here with this hat on, even. Ah. Who, whose birthday is tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. You don't, don't know. know? No. Is there a birthday tomorrow? I, is there a birthday tomorrow? I think so. <laughs> wow. I think she's just being quiet. What do you think? <laughs> I think so. It's Leslie. Wow. Leslie's birthday is tomorrow. <laughs> So professional. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get right into the fun. Um, join us. We're going to sing our opening song. Would you like to? Yeah. I love it. I love that. It, thank you. <laughs> and I would like to invite you, if you feel like standing up and moving with us, please yeah. too. We won't be able to see that you are, but we'll just trust that. <laughs> One, two.
Wonderful. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to a beautiful Sunday celebration service on a beautiful springtime Rocky Mountain Sunday. My name is Robert Ekman and I'm your service host today. We're grateful for you. We're grateful that you joined us either here in person in the sanctuary or on our virtual love stream remotely from wherever you might be relaxing at home. Our practitioner this morning reading for us and leading us in prayer is Teresa Martin, who also led a really great meditation this morning at 10. And I'd like to remind you all to please join us Sunday mornings at 10 for a 15-minute meditation, which is just a wonderful way to start, to start this off. Our practitioner holding high watch today is Topher Steele. Throughout the service, Topher will be in prayer for us and with us, knowing the best and highest good for each of us <clears throat> as we share this sacred time together. This center is a spiritual community that teaches a philosophy for daily living based on spiritual principles and practices that are universal among all religions. We honor every pathway by which people seek to know and connect with the divine, and we work on our individual consciousness so that we can help make the world a better place. So, if you will, please say with me, together and with feeling, our vision statement. We are a thriving community where individually and together we embody and express our spiritual magnificence for the highest good of all. Thank you. If you'd like to be in contact with us, aside from Sundays, or send in a prayer request, or get the latest information on what's happening here at our center, you can do that 24-7 on our website at www.spirituallyfree.org. Continuing the year's theme of living everyday wonder, our focus this month continues to be fun. Today, our message will be offered by Reverend Myrna Hurst on the topic, A Spoonful of Humor is the Best Medicine, and our special music is being provided by Leslie Monroe. Next week, we welcome back Christiane Turner, who will speak to us on the theme, I'll Rest When I'm Dead. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> now I would like to take a moment and welcome anyone who is joining us for the first time. If you're here for the first time and are willing to, to uh, let us welcome you by raising your hand, would you please do so? Hi. Yay. Yay. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, we would, I'd like to invite you to pick up a welcome packet outside in the foyer before you go that has some information for you as well as a Science of Mind magazine. Thank you for being here. And I believe that, uh, that whatever happens here today, you will be blessed. Announcements today. The Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living reopens our youth ministry today. Yay, Hildreth, do we have any kids in class? We do, hooray. We have three. All right. Three baby religious scientists. Yay, yay, oh, I'm so glad. That's wonderful. So just a reminder that a registration for junior church or youth church starts at 1015 on Sunday mornings um, and takes place in the, in the uh, youth church room down the hall. And uh, if any of you have any questions, Hildreth was available after the service to answer them. Thank you, Hildreth, for, for taking this on. This is wonderful to have this back in place. Yay. After this service next week will be our monthly Get to Know Us meeting here in the sanctuary. So whether you're new to this philosophy or not, come and, and join us for a short introduction to the science of mind and get to know us a little bit better. And again, that takes place, that'll take place next Sunday right after this service. All right. 
This center is founded on and grounded in prayer. This helps us deal with whatever comes our way and creates a positive experience regardless of external situations. Our professional prayer practitioners spend four years training in the art and science of affirmative prayer and are here to pray with you and for you. You can write a prayer request in the lobby or submit one on our website and know that our prayer practitioners are in prayer for you all week. You can identify our prayer practitioners by the purple stoles that they wear over their shoulders. All right, now I invite you to please settle in, allow Teresa's reading and the centering music to take you to that sacred space within, and then Teresa will lead us in prayer. This is a short reading, and it's an excerpt from Uncharted Territory by the Reverend Dr. Barry Ebert, and it's from the Science of Mind magazine. Do not go where the path may lead, and go instead where there is no path. And leave a trail, and that's from Ralph Waldo Emerson. When we find ourselves in uncharted territory, our natural tendency is to look for signs that are familiar. And to use our history and expertise to make sense of things. Rather than feeling great, it can feel scary and disorienting to face the unknown and it can cause us to seek a retreat to safety. But we have been designed to face change, to adapt and evolve, and we are being called to do that right now. As we emerge from isolation and build new communities, we can build new relationships with purpose and open our hearts and minds to people who look and live differently. We can set goals to make new friends and expand our circles. We can be an active part of racial healing. have love and peace through me. I do that by being at peace with myself. All frustration, discomfort, panic, anxiety, anger, 
are swept away when I feel peace within me. And as I speak and feel that peace, it spreads into the world. So let all the world have love and peace through me, through my connection with that divine spirit that lives in each and every one. Through that oneness where we are all one, one race, one human race, connected in mind and heart and love. This beautiful, beautiful, beautiful human humanity that fills the world with its love, caring, beauty. It is showing up right now in the activity of all those volunteers. So the peace within spreads. May peace reign in this world. I send my love to all who are not at peace. So peace be unto you and unto me. As together we say, and so it is. Thank you, Teresa. I just love her voice. Um, it always takes me to a sweet place. And I'd like us to go to a sweet place right now. Remember a childhood game you used to play outside. And it's sunny and the weather is perfect. And we have lots of friends. When did we, when did we get to be so serious? I want us right now to give a little time to the child within us. Yeah. Let's sing together this song. It's called Love You.
It's a cute song. It was written by Sandra Diedrich, um, a friend of my family's uh, back in New England, back in the early 70s. Uh, she was in a group called Free Design. And uh, I just remember listening to that as a young adolescent. And uh, it, it, thank you for indulging me. I just love that song. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our special music today. And we are so gifted always to have this remarkable songwriter, singer, keyboard player in our midst and as a, just a key part of this band. Let's give a warm, warm welcome, Leslie Monroe. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we already went through that. You already sang to me. I loved it. <laughs> Only as the band can do it. <laughs> um, I would also like to acknowledge the band who could take a song and have one rehearsal and, and play with me. So thank you, everybody. This song is called Where Is My Bliss Now? Slipping down the water slide, mud pie swinging at Bailey Park. I throw me back my head on the merry go round. Riding in Danny's new Chevy with the windows rolled down, the windows down. Looking back this rainy day, staring.
think I didn't get the memo. I feel so plain. <laughs> you guys are just fabulous. Thank you for everything you do, especially for those shoes. My God. <laughs> Aren't they fabulous? Aren't they wonderful? Hi. I think everybody forgot that it was set your alarm clocks forward a day because, you know, those of us who are here, those of you who are here, and me too, we should be congratulated. For sure. <laughs> oh, I'm doing this without coffee this morning. I just thought you'd like to know that because I'm pretty grouchy. <laughs> my name is Reverend Myrna Hurst. I am just delighted. Oh, my God. Thank you. You see what he did? Rick Charette is a magic man. Just in case you didn't know. Okay. So today is all about a spoonful of, you know, the first time I read it, I, I thought a spoonful of sugar, and then I, this song showed up in my head, a spoonful of sugar melt, you know. And then it turned out to be a spoonful of humor, so now we're doing something else all together. Um, before we get, just a little moment of seriosity, please. I'd like to spend just a little moment in silence in honor of those people in Eastern Europe who are suffering today and have suffered now for some time. Please join me in a little moment of silence as we spread a little joy in their direction. They need it. Thank you. So, it's all about, today is all about being healthy. At least that's what it says it is. And, and so as a, a spoonful of humor does help the medicine go down, and in fact is the medicine. This month we're focusing on joy and laughter and any of you who know me know that that is my absolute reason for being on this planet. If it ain't fun, I ain't going to do it. And that's how the, my world works. So thank you so much for the coffee. That's got to help a lot. Okay. Just, just to start, Ernest Holmes, our founder, says in, in a thing called, uh, I don't remember what it's called anyway, he says, we believe that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal mind, which is the law of God, and that we are surrounded by this creative mind which receives the direct impress of our thoughts and acts upon it. We believe in the healing of the sick through the power of this mind. That's a powerful phrase. And he says, we believe in the control of conditions through the power of this mind. In other words, we get to be in charge. There is no God out there telling us what to do or fixing us because we, don't, we are not broken. We are not broken. We are perfectly whole and healthy right now, sometimes regardless of what it looks like. And can I say that, too, about what's happening in Eastern Europe right now? Despite appearances, everything is working according to divine plan. It always is. And so our job right now is to support those people with our minds, because we know that we are controlling that condition through the power of this mind. Just thought I'd let you know that. So laughter and humor is a large part of healing. I'm sure that you know that. I, I think that we know, all, all know that we feel better if we can smile. So we're going we're gonna to do a little bit of that during the day today, too. We're going to end the day with a little bit of laughter, just in case you... You know, last month, or last week, uh, Rob did his wonderful thing with dancing. He's a hard act to follow. <laughs> but we try. <laughs> a little bit about stress first. Ooh. 
a little bit about stress first because that's where this begins. Stress is what causes disease. We've known that for a long, long time. But not all stress does. If we focus on stress for just a little minute, let's, because that's where this begins, there are two kinds of stress, the good kind and the bad kind. Did you know that? Not all stress is bad. You stress and distress are the names of the two kinds, okay? You stress is actually a good thing. And it happens when something exciting is going on in our lives. So what would be a good example? If you're, if you're doing a workout, okay? And, 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 you're, and you're working on your body and it starts feeling pretty good, that is, that is stressful, absolutely. But it's a good kind of stress because it makes you feel good, okay? Um, the beginning of COVID, on the other hand, was, sounded a lot like distress. Remember when you had to stay home for two weeks and not go outside? Remember when we didn't have any idea what we were up against? There was nothing to be done about it, and people were dying left and right. It was an awful time. I have a friend who is also a minister, and she's a bit of a comic, as am I. And I saw an email from her, I think it was a Facebook post one day. She said, oh my gosh, today's the day I get to take my garbage out to the, out to the dumpster. I'm so excited, I don't know what to wear. You can turn distress into eustress. That's her point. She was going to take something that was awful, make fun of it, and turn it into something that at least she could laugh about. I think that's a cool thing to be able to do. I don't know about you. I am so excited. I get to go outside for 30 seconds. Yay. I am so glad that that is over with now, aren't you? Oh my gosh, yesterday, Theral and I went down to the, to the uh, parade, the St. Patrick's Day parade, and I gotta tell you, we had more fun than humans ought to have. There were people there, there weren't anybody masks. People were dancing and singing and having a good time, talking to each other, it was nice. Such a relief after two years, and we deserve this after two years, we do. So back to this you stress, de-stress thing. Anybody ever hear of Norman Cousins? Do you know who I'm talking about? Back a long time ago in 1964, he, he actually was, was a, a man who had done a bit of studying about health and was, was a scientist in his own right. But in 1964, he was diagnosed with a terrible illness, degenerative arthritis of the spine and connective tissue. And he knew, if he had believed that, that this was not going to be a happy outcome. And, he, and he, he found himself in the hospital. He found himself really unhappy about hospital. Does anybody here love hospital stays? No, we don't, do we? They wake you up in the middle of the night. There's always something going on. You can't rest. They're just nasty, nasty places to be. And he figured that out. And he figured out that in the process of being in the hospital, he was actually making himself sicker. So with the support of his doctor, he checked himself out of the hospital and checked himself into a hotel. To begin with, it was costing about a tenth of the months of how, what he was paying in a hospital room. And he was also in a place where he had some control over his life. His purpose in moving into the hotel, with the help of his doctor, by the way, who was kind of still taking care of him, was to figure out how to have some fun with this. And he stayed in that hospital for a couple of weeks, listening and watching silly movies. And laughing, okay? Uh, he developed a program that included humor and daily laughter. He discovered a cumulative de decrease in his sediment sedimentation rate. You've heard of a sed rate? That's something that measures your stress. A reduction in his inflammation levels. He found that after 10 minutes of good laughter, he could get a night's sleep. That's amazing, especially in 1964 when we figured all medicine was just medicine. After this was over and he cured himself, he found himself on the staff at the medical center at UCLA. 
and he wrote a pretty good book. You might want to read it. It's called Anatomy of an Illness. But the idea that laughter actually heals was his idea. And that's when he started. His quote, my favorite quote of his, is hearty laughter is a good way to jog internally without having to go outdoors. <laughs> so I think we're going to take a two-minute um, laughter vacation right at the end of this talk. Keep going with me. We're good. OK? Ernest Holmes, thoughts of sickness can make a person sick, and thoughts of health and perfection can heal. Thought is the conscious activity of the one thinking and works as he directs through law, and this law may, be, law may be consciously set in motion. This law works for him to the fullest extent of his belief and understanding of it. We come back to that all the time, don't we? It is done unto you as you believe. So if you think you're going to be sick, you know you're going to be sick. If you think you're going to be well, you know you're going to be well. This may no longer be true, but I, I, it was when I was a mom. I had a couple of kids and a husband, and uh, if, if anybody got sick, the kids would bring home stuff from school, you know. They'd get sick, one of them would get sick, and then the next one would get sick, and then my husband would get sick. I didn't get sick. I couldn't get sick. I was being the mom. And as soon as everybody else got well, guess what? <laughs> then I could do it. That let me know, I think that you all have had the same experience, that let me know that I really did control this for myself. I really am in charge of my health. I really am in charge of a lot of pieces in my life. But we're talking about health today, so that's what we're doing, OK? OK, quote number four. So what does that have to do with the science of mind? What does laughter and being in hospitals and stuff like that, what does the science of mind say about all of that? And I, wondered, I pondered this question for a little while. Uh, and I, then I remembered something that Ernest Holmes said a long time ago. He, he had something that he called race mind. Have you heard of that? It's a bad phrase, I think. But that what he meant was not the same as we might say that it, it means today. What he meant is that the human race creates its own reality. And he said, race suggestion. This is a quote. Human beliefs operating through the mentality of the individual, the tendency to reproduce what the race has thought and experienced. This race suggestion is a prolific source of disease. These accumulated subjective tendencies of the human race are operative through any person who is receptive to them. In other words, our culture, the, the word we use now these days, is the culture in which we live creates our reality. So if we can live in a, in a place, well, that's why we come here. Because we find people of like mind and people who have a positive outlook on light and life and people who know that they can control conditions and know that they can control their health, and know that it's OK to laugh and enjoy life, because that's what this is about. Race suggestion is an interesting thing, particularly perhaps right now. Because if we talk about it in terms of culture, I can recognize that we have a culture in here that's called the science of mind culture. We live in, a, in the state of Utah, which certainly has its own culture. California has a culture that's very different from that of Georgia, as an example. Do you know what I'm talking about? And what that really means is that the words that we use in our own head and the words that we put out into our community actually create the reality of that community. I think that's a powerful thing to know. I've lived in the South, and I recognize the way that things in Texas, for gosh sake, that, that, that Texas certainly has its own culture, that California does, that we do. And the way that a culture is created is by the ideas that the people who live there put into that place. We can have a very positive and enjoyable culture. While we were having COVID for that first year or so, it was, it was awful. 
And the culture in this community became sadness and sickness. Did you remember that? Now that we're beginning to pull out of it, more positive ideas and more positive thoughts are going into the world. And as more positive things go into the world, we begin to feel a greater lightness of being. I'm feeling that now. I hope that you're beginning to feel it too. But there is a distinct responsibility involved in being a part of an organization. Once we know what we know, once we get to decide for ourselves and for the community the way that we want life to be, then it's our responsibility to pay attention and let that happen. To turn off the television stations that are telling you how awful the world is. Whenever you reach a situation that you don't understand all of the way, think of all of the ways it could be positive, and then use those. That will make you, like me, a Pollyanna. And I get called that all the time, and I'm fine with it. I am fine with it because I do know that there is a universal power that absolutely seeks good and finds good and is good always. So anytime we're looking at something that looks like misery, we can know that there is a positive outcome out there someplace. So that's where laughter comes in. And it also, the other thing that also comes in there is we get to be more compassionate about our relationships with people. I lived in Texas. And now I think about what's happening in Texas and I think, holy Moses. You know? It's a strange place to be. And yet I know that the people in Texas are not that. The politicians are. The people in Ukraine and the people in Russia are just like you and me. They're raising their families, they go to work in the morning, they have celebrations and celebrate birthdays and holidays and they go out and have fun together sometimes. They're just people living a life. And we can, we can relate and support that as opposed to saying what's wrong with all of the people in Russia or what's wrong with all of the people in, you know, you name it. Or what's wrong with our local community because we are different from the other people there and because they are different from us, they are wrong. That's not so. If we can get to the point where we can actually look at people knowing that this is, there is oneness, that we all are part of the same thing. There is one life here. That life is God's life and it's my life now. We hear that a lot. It's the truth. So if you find people that you dislike or that you don't understand, just know that it's because you don't understand them, not because they're bad. One of the things that sorrow and sadness and drama can do for us is to help us stretch our Pollyanna muscles. You with me? Yeah, okay, so. Laughter. Having a good time. It has such benefit. There's a list of actually 10, 10 physiological benefits of laughter right here. It improves your heart health. Did you know that? It reduces inflammation. If you've got arthritis, laughter is wonderful. It boosts your immunity. It actually makes you healthier. I wish I'd known that when my kids had chicken pox. It would have saved me a whole summer. It lowers your blood pressure and it burns calories. It actually, a 10 minute laughter is like an, an hour's worth of workout. They, those are numbers, that, it's true. It clears your mice, mind and it reduces stress. It eases depression and it helps with memory loss. I can use that every day. <laughs> and it helps you through tough times. So we're gonna spend a little time laughing right now, two minutes. A belly laugh, not a he, he, he laugh, but we want you to just belly laugh for about 10 minutes. I learned this last week. What I learned last week is I don't need a reason to laugh. 
I can just laugh because it's fun to laugh. So laugh with me, will you? It's fun. Come on, give it a shot. Oh, <laughs> oh I don't need a joke or anything. I can just laugh because it's fun to laugh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not doing this at home, you ain't having fun yet. Come on, join, join, join us up here. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, how are you doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Was that worthwhile? Yeah. Did you know you burned about 200 calories? I can't think of a better way to burn calories, can you? <laughs> Beats the heck out of you getting on the treadmill. <laughs> okay. So, a couple of questions. How often do you laugh? I'll bet it's not often enough. What are your traditional sources of laughter? What do you laugh at? Turns out you don't need anything to laugh at. That was the magic lesson that I got last week. I can laugh just because. Because you, know, you do that, and you knew that too, because we just did that. You didn't have to come up with a joke, did you? Or listen to a funny movie. You just <laughs> started laughing. That's what it is. What do you find really funny? And how can you get more of that in your life? Laughter yoga, laughter medicine is really the best medicine. And every time you laugh, there are chemicals released that play an important part in boosting your health. Ask yourself, when I get a good belly laugh going like you just did, how does it feel in my physical body besides the fact that my sides hurt? How does your body feel right now? Yeah, do I notice a change in my mood? Almost better than coffee. <laughs> does my body feel better? Absolutely it does, doesn't it? And how can I expand my awareness of these changes? How about do it more often? <sighs> how are you feeling right now? You ready to laugh another two minutes? <laughs> I almost couldn't get you to stop, could I? That was fun. That was way fun. That was way fun. So your homework. You know I always give you homework. Deal with it. Okay? Your homework for this week is to find something that gets you belly laughing every day. Every day for a week. The, the, the uh, goal is 30 minutes of belly laughing every day. That's a lot. We, we, we laughed for two minutes. But it was just perfect, okay? Find something that gets you belly laughing every day for a week and see how it changes you, because it will. I promise you that. So, and with that, we kind of let this go as we move into prayer. And I want to use a modified prayer from St. Francis, moving it from... Christian terms to the way that we do it. 
as religious scientists. So with me, a deep breath, taking with you the joy that you feel. Don't let that go today. Hang on to the humor, hang on to the laughter, hang on to the joy. It changes your life. As together we pray. I am an instrument of God's peace. Where there is hatred, I sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. I do not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life in this lifetime. In deep gratitude, I accept the joy that is laughter, that is love, that is caring. I gratefully know that the people in this room and on this program are my family. As I know that, I claim it for all here, that this joyous occasion, that the closeness and love of family and friends of living in a place and at a time where I am safe and loved and cared for and that I have the power and the will to love, to spread this beautiful feeling into the rest of this day, yes, into the rest of my life. This is good. It's very good. And I gratefully release it knowing the work is done. My joy is full. And I let it be. As together we say, and so it is. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. You know, 
If we are energy and laughter is energy and love is energy, then everything is energy. And I feel in this moment the flow of energy in and through me and through each of you as we consider the flow of all good. This is our opportunity to share that energy with each other and with the universe. It's an opportunity now to, to bless the center and bless your life by giving and receiving. If we can have our ushers step forward. An important part of this is gratitude as you share your wealth with us today. To be grateful for that wealth and grateful for the opportunity to share. I am so grateful to be part of this organization, to have you as my family, for the opportunity to support this in every way that I can with my wealth and my health and my laughter and caring, it's all the same thing. It's all the energy of flow. So I invite you to bring your offering to your heart and in the spirit of joy, share with me this, this affirmation. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give and all that I received, filled with gratitude, I let this be. And so it is. Thank you, God. Leslie Monroe, thanks for letting you know, us play with Speaking of you laughter, <laughs> speaking of laughter, you know, my husband is a Vietnam veteran, and um, a lot of times when these holidays for the military holidays come by, he's always watching the military movies and stuff, and um, I, I'm more sensitive to it now, so I find other things to do. But like last night, and I'm not into the news either, he didn't turn on the news, he turned on... Shrek. <laughs> and it had me laughing. The other thing, if you have a pet, especially like oh, yeah. a dog, oh, yeah. yes, um, a, my husband and I both agreed that our lives are going to be elongated unless, unless our time comes. <laughs> but uh, there's so much laughter in our home now that we, we both feel that. So get a pet. And did anybody get a pet during the pandemic? There's a lot of people who did. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. We love our little Charlie. Okay. Let's see. How does this start? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> For listening. 
Thank you. Thank you, Myrna. Great talk. That was so fun to laugh. Um, I wasn't sure if, if I could just laugh spontaneously like that, but um, I have to admit, looking at you laugh yeah. was really inspiring. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, just, it was awesome. Yeah. It also reminded me of this, uh, this amazing community. Um, as we were laughing together, I, my mind went back in time, you know, 25 years of so much laughter. I saw faces, um, Clark Jolly, Carl Decker, Betty Bogart, and all, they were all just laughing with us, just, just buckling over. And so many moments like that in this community, everybody here on the stage with me, I, I just, love to be with them and laugh with them and they're they're pretty funny sometimes uh, so thanks for the homework i'll certainly get on that and yes leslie was absolutely right getting getting a dog made a whole lot of difference last year in shemaine and my life um we laugh every day uh, stupid things he does it just it's wonderful Anyway, I wish you a blessed week, a happy St. Patty's Day. Um, don't forget to wear something green or you might get pinched by somebody. And unfortunately, that's still a reality, apparently. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, can we, can we bring in the children? We haven't even talked about that. Not today. Not today. Not today. But thank you. Farrah, I agree. Good. Okay, we'll work on that. 
But thank you, Hildreth, for starting Youth Church back up. Um, it'll be so much fun. See, that's another thing that brings a lot of smiles here. Look at little kids and how bright and smiley they are. So much hope. Let's stand together and sing our closing medley. We're going to sing a song called Dance and then go right into the peace song. And peace begins with you. And let's, let's direct it outward. And let's, let's just encircle the whole world in a big hug. Gonna go with the moment I'm gonna feel so free I'm gonna dance to the rhythm of the universe Gonna lead my destiny I'm gonna go with the moment I'm gonna feel so free I'm gonna dance to the rhythm Gonna feel 